The Council for Quality Assurance in General and Further Education and Training, Huma Lucy, has raised its concerns about the illegal uh, online school selling fake certificates. This follows various cases that concern uh, unaccredited institutions that admit students into non existing programs and later issue certificates purported uh, to be accredited by Huma Lucy. So, good evening. Welcome to this edition of uh, Soweto Today. Tonight we zoom into the issue of bogus schools that give false hope to students who spend money to get qualifications that will ultimately help them find uh, decent jobs. We dissect the implications uh, this has on students, their families and their community at large. To help us with our discussion for today is Vicky Lepota, who is the Public Relations and Communications Senior Manager at Umalusi and is joining us now in studio via Zoom. Mr. Lepota, thanks very much. Good evening and welcome to Soweto Today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tabu. Uh, thanks for having us and good, good evening to your listeners. Much appreciated. I mean, you know, I know this is a concern for you. I saw your statements, uh, you know, uh, circulated on various social media platforms. I mean, for the viewer who is watching now, maybe let's begin here, uh, you know, to understand Uma Lucy and the work that you do as Uma Lucy before we can get into the integrities of this issue. Thank you very much. Um, Umanusi, as you've um, outlined, it's the South Africa's Council for Quality Assurance. Its mandate um, is very broad, but I'll try to simplify it. Umanusi exists to ensure that if there is any person who is wanting to open or establish their independent school, that school is registered first with the provincial education department in the province where the school is situated. After registration, the school must apply to Malusi for accreditation if they want to offer any of our qualifications. And by the qualifications, I am referring to the National Senior Certificate, the National Certificate Vocational, N2 and 3 Certificates, as well as the General Education and Training Certificates. Those are the certificates for which Malusi is legislatively mandated to quality assure and issue a certificate to successful learners. Additional to that, Uma Lucy is responsible for the quality assurance of the question papers that are associated with the certificates that I've just outlined. And upon successful completion of those examinations, Uma Lucy issues certificate. In the case of public schools, public schools do not get accredited by Uma Lucy. The minister, whether you're talking about the Minister of Basic Education or the Minister of Higher Education and Training, they are legislatively mandated to ensure that there are institutions where learners can go and receive education, whether you're talking about basic education or post-school education and training. So, so, so those do not um, have to be accredited by Umalusi. We are talking about independent schools as well as private AET centers, as well as private TVET colleges that need to be accredited. So broadly, that is what Umalusi is legislatively mandated to do. Mm. I want us to talk about uh, the issue of the bogus schools uh, because I know that, uh, I mean, with uh, the proper certificates, it must bear also your signature there on some of the certificates. And maybe just talk us, how did you find out about these uh, bogus schools? So, I mean, we've been seeing people complaining on social media also about it. Well, Umalusi operates what we call a whistleblower line. This is the uh, platform where people can report anything that is going out uh, on, on out there in the name of Umalusi um, in an un unlawful manner. So through the, 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 the platform, we, we received complaints during the month of June to say we have discovered that there are institutions calling themselves online schools, which are admitting students into uh, programs which are non-existent. By non-existent program, we say currently as we speak, there is no legislation in our country which regulates um, online provisioning. So if there is no, there is no um, legislation, that no one can open an online institution and admit learners into such institutions, um, promising them um, things which they will not be able to deliver at the end of the day. Secondly, what concerns Umalusi about the information that we have received is that learners were made to write um, um, question papers last year in November, which are not matric question papers. 
And when learners got admitted into those, they were promised that they would be able to get a metric certificate. Now, when they went back to those institutions at the beginning of this year, asking for the institutions to give them their certificate, the institutions actually cited Umalusi to say, we've applied for accreditation to Umalusi, but Umalusi is delaying. That's why we are saying that is patently false. We want to deny categorically to say we cannot accredit an online institution because currently as we speak there is no legislation to regulate that mm. you know i'm very interested in finding out how are you currently dealing with the situation I'm, i've heard you in various interviews talking about an instance whereby you know there was a certain question paper that was given to students to write uh, also i mean um, in, in in one of the provinces that you cited there and then you know Obviously, some way, somehow, also that is illegal in itself if, uh, you know, you give people a question that, uh, I mean, a, 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 how do I call it? A, a question paper that, uh, you know, it's supposed to be written by maybe um, um, by, uh, by other provinces and then you give it to people to write while well, knowing that you also are not regulated there. How are you dealing with this situation? Are, have there been any arrests in this matter? In terms of the process, um, upon receipt of such complaints from members of the public, Umalusi considers the matters, we look at the matters, we check with the relevant government entities if um, they are aware of uh, such uh, practices. And once we've gathered all the information, we then liaise with the South African police services. Because from a point of view of the law, they are the ones who are mandated to conduct invest um, criminal investigations. So we've handed over the matter to the South African police services. So we are working closely with them so that this matter reaches the fi it, uh, its finality. Let's park it there, uh, Mr. Biki. Uh, we will continue this discussion after the ad break. Illegal schools tend to attract the most disadvantaged populations, the ones who could uh, least afford you know, to pay the price of uh, bad education. Not only do they offer degrees and certificates uh, that do not advance the learning or prospects of the students, they leave them indebted. I want us to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us tonight. We are talking about the mushrooming of bogus online schools, as well as an increase in the reported cases of fake certificates being sold to unsuspecting members of the public. We're in conversation with Biki Lepota, who is the Public Relations and Communications Senior Manager of Umalusi and is joining us in studio via Zoom. Mr. Lepota, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, these bogus schools, they cause implications, especially because they are mostly, you know, they mostly require students to pay for fees and uh, for the certificates they have acquired. Uh, you know, what do you make of those who are selling fake certificates. I mean, um, these days you're seeing a lot of uh, ads or posts on social media, uh, you know, with online schools. I mean, you've already explained that um, you do not accredit online education because of uh, edu uh, online schools because of there's no leg legislation to regulate that. What do you make of these ones that are selling um, uh, these fake certificates? I mean, given the situation that we are in as a country. You are right. Um, um, selling of fake certificates is another of our concern. It, and I, we believe that is not only a concern to Malusi. That should be a concern to everybody in the country um, because it is very costly in two ways. It is costly in that you need to pay an amount of money for you to get such fake certificates. Secondly, you spend considerable amount of money thinking that you are receiving education only to find that at the end of the day that the certificate that you receive is not where the paper is written on, it's a fake certificate. Which fake certificate is not usable if you are wanting to get admission into higher education programs? The certificate is not usable in terms of you gaining employment because higher education institutions are working very closely with Umalusi in order to make their final decisions in terms of who they are going to admit into their program. So we have what we call a verification service, which the universities make use of to authenticate the papers or the certificates that learners um, present to those universities. Secondly, employers, both in the public and private sectors, are aware 
of the verification service of Umalusi. If somebody is presenting themselves with a certificate, whether you are talking NSC, GTC, NCV, N2, or N3, they know that for them to make final decisions and to protect themselves, they get in touch with the verification agencies that Umalusi has signed contracts with. And the names and the contact details of those agencies are available on the website of Umalusi. If anybody wants to authenticate the certificate of either their existing employees or future employees. So that is a service that is been put in place in order to safeguard the interest of our young people. Mm. I mean, you, you know, I know that obviously you don't do placements as uh, Umalusi, as you said, that uh, there is uh, some sort of a system whereby people can do verifications and, and, and stuff. But I wanted to check, as Umalusi, are there any programs that you are embarking on to make sure that students do not fall into this trap? Because, you know, when you say that uh, you can go and verify and stuff, we know that, uh, you know, most of the people are desperate in order to make sure that they get uh, certain qualifications and stuff. Is there some sort of advocacy programs that you are uh, embarking on as Umalis in order to make sure that at least, you know, you deal with this or maybe road shows of some sort? You, thank you for the question. In fact, uh, yes, there is an advocacy program that we put together about two, three years back. For example, in December 2022, if I'm not mistaken, it was on the 9th of December, we had a webinar, we invited stakeholders from all walks of life. We said we come join this webinar. It was a webinar intended to educate members of the public about what to look for or what to look out for in choosing an independent school or a private TVET college. That was intended to ensure that people get the right information before they make decisions in January of the following year in terms of where to enroll their own, where to enroll their, their their learners. Yes, we do have advocacy, and the information is freely available on the website of Umalusi. Sometimes we do work with our sister quality councils such as your SACWA, CHE, and 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 QCTO um, on campaigns. We visit, um, recently we've been to the Western Cape, where we visited uh, several schools, um, teaching them about what to look out for in deciding um, about where to enroll your, your, your children. Mm. Um, you know, um, I, I just wonder, maybe before we get into the solutions, um, maybe how do we resolve such an issue. We know that uh, um, it's going to continue. Uh, we seeing there's is institutions that are also have been there for quite some time now and then we seeing that they are not actually shutting their doors uh, at this stage. How do we deal with uh, such a situation? Dealing with a situation requires each one of us. It's a, this is a societal program, a problem. It requires each one of us to do what we're supposed to do. As Umalusi, we will continue um, educating the public about these problems. Mm -hmm. It requires the South African police services to, to, to um, speed up the process of investigating such bogus institutions and shut them down because from a legal point of view, it is not the responsibility of Umalusi to shut down institu illegal institutions. It is the responsibility of law enforcement agencies. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, members of the public, all stakeholders, need to ensure that they need to make sure that um, they exercise vigilance um, in making decisions because you are investing heavily. You're investing in time, you're investing in money by taking your kids to such institutions. So on the website of Umalusi, um, we also have a service which members of the public can make use of if they want in to check whether an institution is accredited or not. Mm. If they go to the website, they, no, they click on the verification icon. Mm. They can just... Um, 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 Sorry to interject there, Mr. Lepote. You know, I just wanted to check. You've, you've highlighted something that, uh, you know, law enforcement are also not implementing, uh, you know, shutting down these institutions. But... I mean, over the, in the long run, have you seen um, a progress in terms of these bogus schools being shut down? Because of a lot of students are falling into this trap. What we are saying, as um, um, I indicated earlier on, everybody has to play their part. Umalusi has to intensify its advocacy program, educating members of the public about the illegal bogus institutions. 
members of the public need to make sure that um, um, they do their homework before deciding on which institution they will enroll their children with. And they can do that by visiting the website of Umalus. In that way, you will be shutting out those that are illegal because you will be making a decision on the basis of information provided to you by Umalusi. In terms of the law enforcement agents, we do understand the challenges of our own country. Um, it may not be happening at the speed at which we desire as members of the public, but things are happening um, as far as the law enforcement agencies are concerned. Let's take a quick ad break here. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are about to wrap up the conversation with Bigi Lepota, who is the Public Relations and Communications Senior Manager at Umalusi. And uh, he's still joining us uh, via Zoom as we talk about the issue of bogus online schools. That seems to be a trend in the country. Mr. Lepota, thanks very much. As we wrap up the conversation, you know, I want us to look at how does one um, you know, avoid falling into the trap of these um, unregistered or, if I say, illegitimate schools, especially uh, coming from disadvantaged backgrounds and do not have full access to the information. Thank you very much. Um, what um, we can say is that it is um, a common knowledge that uh, most of our people do have access to smartphones. And in the majority of cases, the shopping complexes that are available across the country do provide free um, Wi-Fi services. So with these two tools um, um, at hand, they can log on, use their smartphones to visit the website of Umalusi and check what's going on. But diligence is key. Diligence is key. It's like making a decision to buy a house. You do your homework until, before you make that final decision. Investment in the form of the amount of money that people pay, investment in the form of the time that people um, spent with those bogus institutions. It's something that um, we need to protect. Um, so just make sure that if you do not have access to the internet services, you can check with the nearest Department of Education office, whether you're talking about the circuit office, whether you're talking about the district office, whether you're talking about the provincial office, check with them if such institutions are registered with them. You can also ask them to assist you to check if the institutions are accredited by Umalusi. So information is freely available. It requires of us just to search so they inform the people that we don't fall into this trap. Mm. Um, you know, as Umalusi, I wanted to check um, what is it that you will be doing to make sure that these incidences do not occur anymore and limit the risk? I mean, you did speak about uh, the slow pace of law enforcement in addressing these issues. Um, in the long run, what happens now? I think um, what we base on the lessons that we have learned, we are working on a strategy to involve other role players. Um, in this to ensure that um, we protect our uh, um, young people from, from being scammed in this way. So it's just a matter of making sure that we involve all role players, beginning with learners um, in schools, moving on to working with teacher associations, moving on to working, working with employers, whether in the public sector or the private sector, moving to looking at how best um, we can ensure that the law enforce enforcement agencies um, move with speed um, to deal with these issues. Until those that are in existence now are closed, it will take time for people to believe that this thing can be stopped. Mm. I, I want us to give an advice to the students and parents who are watching now on how to go about registering and even for the viewer who unfortunately fell into the trap. Maybe let's give them advice, you know, give them some sort of positivity, you know, telling them that, uh, look, the mistake has happened, you were into, you know, you went into this, but uh, this is how to do it. And then we are assuring you that, look, we've got uh, your best interest as Umalusi. Yes, um, thank you very much. Two categories of learners. The learner who has not yet enroll themselves, they are maybe um, 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 still in primary or high school, they will make a decision in terms of where to go next year. 
you do as we say you do check if this institution is registered check if the institution is accredited so that you you, you avoid falling into that trap those who find themselves in the situation already they can do, they can do, they can do two things one just double check with the provincial education department or second office or district office if such an institution is a great, is registered and check with Umalusi. And if not, it is your responsibility to go to the nearest police station and report the matter. So we have to work in this thing together because as we indicated, it is a societal problem. It is a responsibility of every South African to ensure that we fight this thing together. Mm -hmm. And uh, by reporting that, we will be actually proving that every single one of us is serious in dealing with these matters. Additional to that, they go to the website of Umalusi or they can call Umalusi and report um, such institutions so that we can actually come up with a concerted effort and um, working together to ensure that these things get stopped and nipped in the bud as soon before it is very late. Um, before I let you go, Mr. Lepota, you know, um, before you give us um, the details on how people can go about doing that, I wanted to check for people that want to also check their status, particularly in terms of their metric um, certificates and stuff, uh, is, that, is there provision for that on your website as Umalusi for a person who has maybe, uh, you know, finished metric a few years back, or maybe the one that has written recently, can they be able to check it online on the website of Umalusi? And also just give us the details of uh, where people can go in terms of um, the website and the numbers. Let me just clarify that the certificates that um, Umalusi is responsible for, for, for issuing are certificates uh, from 1992. Those issued before 1992, they must go to the Department of Education. Now, regarding the certificates that Umalusi is responsible for quality assuring, if you've lost, for example, we've recently launched a service called the Certificate Replacement System. So instead of you going to the Department of Education and spending time in queues and spending money on taxi, you can, from wherever you are, log on to the website of Umalusi and click on the icon labeled Certificate Replacement. That's where you can apply for a replacement certificate. That's if your certificate is lost or damaged. So you apply online and you pay 167, if I'm not mistaken. And if you want the certificate to be sent to you, you pay 202. Within seven to 10 working days, you will receive your certificate. Whether people can check if they do have a legitimate certificate, we don't as yet have that such a, a, such a system on the Umalusi website. But that is something that they can check with the body which under which they wrote their examinations, whether you're talking about metric exams or NCV exa um, exams, GTC, N2 and N3, they can check with those uh, bodies where they wrote the examinations. Mm. Please just give us the details before we wrap up. The details of Umalusi, if you want to check, you www.umalusi.org.za and the telephone number of Umalusi is 012-349-1510. And on the website of Umalusi, if you are wanting to verify institutions, you click on the icon called Certificates and Verification. If you wanting to check if any institution is accredited, you click on the icon called Accredited Institutions. So that is the service that is freely available to members of the public so that they avoid falling prey to these bogus um, um, institutions. Mr. Bigele Porter, thanks very much for taking the time. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the time. That was uh, Biki Lepota, who is the Public Relations and Communications Senior Manager of Umalusi, helping us unpack the issue of bogus online schools that give false hope to students who are hungry for education and a bright future. We also touch on what uh, Umalusi is currently doing to help those that have been victimized. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode by simply sending us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 081 from the rest of the team and myself. Good night and thank you for watching.